Josephus, Antiquities of the Jews, Book 13, Chapter 9, Section 1. Hyrcanus took also Dora and Marissa. Cities of Idumea, and subdued all the Idumeans. and permitted them to stay in that country if they would circumcise their genitals and make use of the laws of the Jews. And they were so desirous of living in the country of their forefathers that they submitted to the use of circumcision. And the rest of the Jewish ways of living, at which time therefore this befell them, that they were hereafter no other than Jews. The phrase that they were hereafter no other than Judeans from Josephus's Antiquities of the Jews means that after their conversion, the Edomites, Idumeans, were fully integrated into the nation of Judah. By undergoing circumcision and adopting the laws and customs of the Judeans, the Edomites were no longer considered a separate people with a distinct identity. Instead, they were regarded as Judeans in every respect, religiously, socially, and culturally. This integration was so complete that according to Josephus, the Edomites lost their previous identity and were henceforth indistinguishable from the original Judean population. This phrase underscores the idea that the Edomites, by accepting Judean practices and laws, were fully absorbed into the nation of Judah. Josephus, the Judean historian, discusses the forced conversion of the Edomites into the nation of Judah in his work, Antiquities of the Jews, Book 13, Chapter 9, Section 1. He describes how John Hyrcanus, the Hasmonean leader, subdued the Edomites, also known as Idumeans, and offered them the choice to either leave their land or convert to Judaism by undergoing circumcision and following the laws of the Judeans. The Edomites chose to convert and thus became part of the Jewish nation. This act of conversion allowed the Edomites to be fully integrated into the Judean nation, and it marked a significant change in their identity. While the Edomites had historically been enemies of Israel, their integration into the Jewish nation through religious conversion provided them with new opportunities, including the ability to claim full citizenship in Judea. This assimilation also enabled the Edomites to eventually assert a racial identification with the Judeans, further blurring the lines between these two groups. This historical event, as narrated by Josephus, is crucial in understanding the complex identity dynamics between the Israelites, Judeans, and Edomites during this period. It highlights how political and religious strategies were used to consolidate power and unify different groups under a common religious and national identity. The forced conversion of the Edomites into the nation of Judah presented a unique opportunity for them to advance their long-standing cause against Jacob Israel. This strategy allowed them to achieve what military offensives from Mount Seir had failed to accomplish. By accepting Judean religious practices such as circumcision, Sabbath observance, festival participation, and dietary laws, the Edomites gained acceptance as spiritual equals among the indigenous Judeans. This religious assimilation paved the way for the Edomites to eventually claim full citizenship in Judea. From this position, they could begin to assert a racial identification with the Judeans. As descendants of Esau, they sought to be absorbed into the family of Jacob Israel, effectively taking on a new identity.
This process of integration and identity adoption came to be known as Esau's Stolen Identity. It represents a significant shift in how the Edomites engaged with and ultimately infiltrated Judean society, moving from external conflict to internal assimilation and identity appropriation. The Edomites' strategy of assimilation and identity adoption extended beyond mere religious acceptance. Their ultimate goal was to gain potential ownership of the coveted promised land, a prize long desired by their ancestors. To achieve this, they recognized the need for a deeper infiltration into Judean society. The Edomites set their sights on the primary religious parties in Judea, the Pharisees and Sadducees. These groups held significant religious and political influence over the country. By infiltrating these parties, the Edomites could position themselves at the heart of Judean power structures. Most of these true Jews aligned themselves with alternative religious groups like the Essenes, with some joining the more militant Zealots. A select few, such as Joseph of Arimathea, Nicodemus, and Gamaliel, associated with the mainstream Pharisees or Sadducees. The population of Judea at this time was a mix of Judean Israelites, the majority, and Edomite Canaanites, who had adopted Judean religion and citizenship. By the first century CE, the Edomite appropriation of a new identity was complete. Over the course of a century, these Edomite Canaanite infiltrators had fully integrated and assimilated into Judean society. This situation created a complex interplay of identities with the true Israelite remnant, maintaining their distinct heritage amidst a changing social and religious landscape dominated by Edomite influence and Roman control. The passage emphasizes the preservation of authentic Israelite lineage and faith in the face of these significant cultural and political shifts. Understanding the Pharisees, a complex religious group. The Pharisees were one of the most influential religious groups during the Second Temple period, playing a significant role in shaping Judean religious practice. However, their legacy has often been misunderstood and oversimplified, leading to misconceptions about their beliefs and practices. The Pharisees were indeed one of the most prominent and influential religious groups in Judea during the Second Temple period. Their influence extended across various aspects of Judean religious life, and they enjoyed significant popular support among the Judean people. However, describing them as the largest religious party may oversimplify the complex landscape of Judean sects during that time. The Sadducees, who represented the priestly aristocracy, and the Essenes, a more ascetic group, also played vital roles in the religious and political dynamics of the period. The Pharisees were part of a broader spectrum of religious movements, each with its own distinct beliefs and practices. The Pharisees were known for their rigorous adherence to the Torah and their commitment to applying its teachings to everyday life. They were indeed recognized for their moral rigor and zeal in preserving Judean law and tradition. However, the label of self-righteous, often found in New Testament critiques, portrays the Pharisees as overly concerned with outward appearances of piety, sometimes at the expense of inner spiritual humility. While this critique may apply to some within the Pharisaic movement, it risks generalizing a diverse and complex group whose motivations and practices varied widely. One of the most significant contributions of the Pharisees to Judean religious life was their devotion to a body of oral traditions that interpreted and applied the Torah in practical ways. These traditions were seen as essential to understanding and fulfilling the Torah's commandments and played a central role in Pharisaic teaching. The Pharisees did not view these oral traditions as superseding the Torah, but rather as complementing and explicating it. In conclusion, the Pharisees were a complex and influential group whose commitment to the Torah and its oral interpretation had a lasting impact on Judean religious practice. Understanding their legacy requires a nuanced approach that considers the diversity of thought and practice within the group, as well as their broader context within the Judean religious landscape of the Second Temple period. By appreciating the complexities of the Pharisees, we gain a deeper insight into their enduring influence on the development of religious thought.
The Sadducees were not so much a religious sect as they were a distinct class of rationalists within Judean society. Known for their humanistic views, they rejected belief in the supernatural, including the existence of angels and the spirit world. As Acts 23.8 states, the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, neither angel nor spirit. They also denied the miracles performed by Jesus Christ and were particularly opposed to the concept of resurrection, which placed them in direct contrast with other religious groups of the time, like the Pharisees, who believed in the resurrection and the spiritual realm. Their emphasis on human reason over faith marked them as the rationalists of Judea. The Sadducees, described as those who dote on human reason above faith, were well represented within the Sanhedrin and the priesthood, holding significant influence. Acts 4.1 They reveled in skepticism, denying life after death, and regarding the supernatural. They even questioned the inspiration of Scripture. In Matthew 22.23-29, Jesus rebukes them, saying, Ye do err, not knowing the Scriptures, nor the power of God, highlighting their lack of understanding and belief in spiritual matters. Their approach to religious matters was characterized by deep-seated skepticism as reflected in their interactions with Jesus and the early Christian apostles. The Sadducees' focus on logic and reason over spiritual belief positioned them as the humanists of their time, challenging foundational religious beliefs with their rationalist perspective. The Essenes were a relatively small sect of Judeans that existed between 100 BC and 100 AD numbering fewer than 5,000 members. This group was known for its quiet pastoral way of life and for living in tightly knit communal settings. The Essenes were ascetics, believing that withdrawing from the worldly influences of society was essential for maintaining spiritual purity. Their commitment to simplicity and asceticism set them apart from other Judean groups of the time. The Essenes' way of life was deeply spiritual and focused on devotion with strict adherence to purity laws and communal sharing of resources. They saw separation from the broader society as necessary to live in accordance with their strict religious principles. Their communities were often isolated, emphasizing a life of prayer, study, and manual labor. One of the most significant contributions of the Essenes to religious history is their connection to some of the oldest known biblical manuscripts. Many scholars believe that the Dead Sea Scrolls discovered near Qumran by the Dead Sea in the 1940s were the work of the Essenes. These manuscripts, which include some of the oldest copies of Old Testament scriptures, provide invaluable insights into the religious practices and beliefs of the time. The discovery of these texts has greatly enhanced our understanding of early Judean religious life and the textual history of the Hebrew Bible. The Zealots were a fervent political faction with deeply rooted religious convictions about their Judean homeland. Driven by a passionate nationalism, the Zealots were determined to overthrow Roman rule through force and to restore the Judean state to its former glory, reminiscent of the era of the Maccabees. Their intense patriotism fueled their desire to liberate Judea from Roman occupation and reestablish its independence. One of the most notable figures associated with the Zealots was Simon Zelotes also known as Simon the Zealot, who was mentioned in Luke 6.15. His name, Zelotes, likely indicates his affiliation with the Zealot movement, distinguishing him from Simon Peter. In Matthew 10.4, he is referred to as Simon the Canaanite, a term that likely denotes his origin from one of the Canaanite regions of Judea, rather than implying any racial connotation, as Simon was indeed an Israelite. Scholars often identify several historical figures as being linked to the Zealot cause. For instance, Barabbas, mentioned in Mark 15:7, as well as Thutis and Judas of Galilee, referenced in Acts 5:36 to 37, are frequently considered to have been part of or aligned with the Zealot movement. These individuals were part of a broader resistance against Roman rule, embodying the Zealots' commitment to reclaiming their nation's sovereignty. The Sicarii were a radical Judean group in the first century CE, known for their extreme opposition to Roman rule and their involvement in the Judean revolt against Rome. The term Sicarii comes from the Latin word sica, meaning dagger, 
which refers to the small curved daggers they used for assassinations. They were known for their tactics of stealthily killing Romans and their collaborators, including Judean leaders, who were seen as complicit with Roman authority. Biblical and historical context. While the Sicarii are not directly mentioned in the Bible, their activities and influence are closely related to the tumultuous period leading up to the destruction of the Second Temple in 70 CE, a time also covered in the New Testament. The New Testament reflects the broader unrest among the Judean people under Roman occupation and the rise of various groups that sought to resist Roman rule, including the Sicarii. Their cause. The Sicarii's cause was the liberation of Judea from Roman rule and the establishment of a state free from foreign influence. They were part of the broader zealot movement, which aimed to incite the Judean population to rise up against Rome. Their methods, however, were particularly ruthless, and they targeted not only Romans, but also fellow Judeans, who they believed were collaborating with the Romans. Their actions contributed to the tensions that eventually led to the Judean revolt, 66, 73 CE, and the subsequent destruction of Jerusalem and the Second Temple by the Romans. The Sicarii are often seen as one of the most extreme factions within the resistance, embodying the desperation and radicalism that emerged in response to the harsh Roman occupation and the perceived corruption within Judean society. The Edomite and Canaanite population in Judea was well integrated into both the Pharisee and Sadducee communities. They freely mingled within these religious groups and were fully accepted in both movements. This strategic position allowed the descendants of Esau Edom to assert their claim to the promises that the Most High had made to Jacob Israel, the rightful heirs of the unconditional Abrahamic covenant. By the first century of the Christian era, the Edomian descendants of Esau and the Canaanite elements in Judea had effectively usurped the identity of Jacob Israel. They began to present themselves as the true seed of Abraham, positioning themselves as the heirs to all of God's promises, including the highly coveted promised land. A closer examination of New Testament scripture reveals how the Edomite and Canaanite people laid claim to the identity of Jacob Israel. The succession of John Hyrcanus, 135-105 BC, brought instability to Judea. His son Aristobulus ruled briefly for a year before his brother Alexander Janius, 104-78 BC, took power. Alexander's support of Sadducean policies angered the Pharisee favoring majority. Upon Alexander's death, his widow assumed leadership, reversing her husband's stance by supporting the Pharisees. She appointed her elder son, Hyrcanus II, as high priest, which incensed the younger son, Aristobulus. This favoritism prompted Aristobulus to launch a military campaign against Jerusalem. Amidst this brotherly strife, an opportunistic Idumean named Antipater sought to exacerbate the conflict between Hyrcanus II and Aristobulus. Antipater's actions represent a calculated move by the Idumeans to exploit internal Judean discord, potentially advancing their own influence within the region's power structures. This period marks a critical juncture where Edomite, Idumean interests began to significantly intersect with and influence Judean politics, taking advantage of the instability within the ruling Hasmonean dynasty. The internal strife in Judea caught the attention of the Romans who were expanding their control across the world. In 63 BC, Pompey led a Roman siege on Jerusalem, reducing Judea to a vassal state of the Roman Empire. Hyrcanus II was appointed high priest, but denied the title of king, while Maccabean factions unsuccessfully attempted to resist Roman rule.
Antipater the Edomite, having cultivated favor with the Romans, was rewarded with the position of procurator of Judea in 47 BC. His sons, Phasael and Herod, were appointed governors of Jerusalem and Galilee respectively. This marked a significant shift in power dynamics, as Idumeans, descendants of Esau, now held the highest political offices in Judea under Roman authority. This development represented a crucial step in the Edomites' long-term strategy to appropriate the identity of Jacob Israel. By securing these influential positions within the Roman-controlled Judean government, the Edomites were advancing their goal of not just assimilating into Judean society, but potentially redefining it from within. Their rise to power under Roman rule brought them closer to their objective of claiming the heritage and identity of Jacob Israel as their own. The Edomites were forcibly integrated into the nation of Judea through a coerced conversion to Judean religious practices, carried out under threat of violence. This forced assimilation blurred the lines between the two formerly distinct groups. This forced assimilation blurred the lines between the two formerly distinct groups. The appointment of Antipater, an Edomite, as the political leader of Judea in 47 BC, marked a significant milestone in the Edomite strategy. This development brought them closer to their long-standing ambition of controlling the fate of the Jacob Israel population residing in Judea. This strategic positioning within Judean power structures represented a crucial step in the Edomites' plan to influence and potentially redefine Judean society from within. By securing this high-ranking position, The Edomites were advancing their goal of not just assimilating into Judean society, but reshaping its very identity and destiny. This historical process reflects a complex interplay of forced cultural assimilation, political maneuvering, and the gradual transformation of societal power dynamics, ultimately leading to a significant shift in the control and direction of Judean affairs. With calculated precision, the Edomites began to find acceptance within these influential religious bodies. Their adherence to Judean religious practices, combined with their growing social and economic influence, allowed them to gradually integrate into these powerful factions. This infiltration was not merely superficial. It was a deliberate move to gain control over the religious and political landscape of Judea. As they gained footholds within the Pharisees and Sadducees, the Edomites were positioning themselves to shape Judean policy. Interpretation of religious law, and ultimately, the very identity of the nation. The identity of the Israelites is intricately connected to the laws, statutes, and commandments given by God. These divine instructions were not just religious guidelines, but foundational to the cultural and societal fabric of Israel, distinguishing them from all other nations. This deep infiltration was a crucial step in their long-term strategy to not just assimilate, but to potentially dominate and redefine Judean society from within. This process of infiltration and influence building within key religious and political structures set the stage for the Edomites to potentially rewrite their place in history, moving from outsiders to central figures in the narrative of the Promised Land. The law served as a covenant between God and Israel, marking them as his chosen people. This covenantal relationship established the Israelites' unique identity, emphasizing their role as a holy nation set apart from others. Moreover, the laws were intended to maintain Israel's purity and prevent the assimilation of foreign customs and practices. By adhering to these commandments, the Israelites were to reflect the holiness of God, 
reinforcing their distinctiveness in the world. Even in the New Testament, the connection between Israel's identity and the law remains strong. The teachings of Jesus and the apostles reaffirm that the laws and commandments are central to understanding Israel's role and purpose in God's plan. Thus, the laws, statutes, and commandments are more than just rules. They are the very essence of what it means to be an Israelite, binding the people to their God and to their unique identity as His chosen nation. Hyrcanus' interaction with the Idumeans, Edomites, is more prominently noted for his military, conquest of their territory, and subsequent forced conversion, as recorded by Josephus. After subduing the Idumeans, Hyrcanus required them to adopt Judean customs, including circumcision, if they wished to remain in their land. This marked a significant moment of assimilation, but it did not involve hiring Edomite mercenaries. The Hasmoneans, including Hyrcanus, often used mercenaries from other regions, such as Greeks, or other neighboring non-Israelite forces, to supplement their armies, especially in their campaigns against the Seleucids and other enemies. However, Edomites themselves, after their forced conversion, became more integrated into the socio-political structure of Jude, rather than serving as a separate mercenary force. charged them, saying, Take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the leaven of Herod. Mark 8.15 KJV The symbolism of leaven. Leaven, or yeast, is used in the Bible as a symbol of influence, often representing sin or corruption that can spread and permeate a whole community. In this verse, Jesus uses the metaphor of leaven to describe the corrupting influences of both the Pharisees and Herod. The concept of leaven in the Bible is often used metaphorically to represent influence, particularly corrupting or pervasive influence. In Mark 8.15, Jesus warns his disciples to beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the leaven of Herod. This warning addresses the spiritual and moral corruption that had infiltrated the religious and political leadership of Israel at the time. The Leaven of the Pharisees The Pharisees were a prominent religious group in Israel known for their strict adherence to the Law of Moses and their extensive traditions. However, over time, many Pharisees became hypocritical, prioritizing external religious observance over genuine righteousness. Their leaven refers to the corrupting influence of their hypocrisy, legalism, and self-righteousness, which distorted the true intent of God's laws and misled the people of Israel. The Pharisees' focus on outward appearances and their addition of burdensome traditions created a religious system that was often at odds with the spirit of the law and the teachings of Jesus. 
the infiltration of Edomites into the priesthood. Another significant concern during this period was the infiltration of Edomites, descendants of Esau, into the Jewish priesthood and leadership. One of the most notable figures in this infiltration was Antipater, an Edomite who became a powerful political figure and the father of Herod the Great. The Edomites had been forcibly converted to Judaism during the reign of John Hyrcanus, and over time they gained significant influence in Judea, including within the priesthood. This infiltration brought foreign elements into the spiritual leadership of Israel, further corrupting the religious practices and weakening the distinctiveness of the Israelite priesthood. The Leaven of Herod Herod the Great, an Edomite, was appointed as king of Judea by the Romans. His rule marked a significant departure from the Davidic line of kings and introduced a new level of corruption and foreign influence into the governance of Israel. Herod was known for his brutal methods, including the murder of his own family members and the infamous massacre of the infants in Bethlehem. His leaven symbolizes the corrupting influence of power, political manipulation, and moral decay that he introduced into Judean society. Under Herod's rule, the blending of Roman and Edomite influences further eroded the spiritual and moral fabric of the nation. Conclusion Jesus' warning about the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod is a call to vigilance against the corrupting influences that can permeate religious and political leadership. The infiltration of Edomites into the priesthood and Herod's reign over Israel exemplify how foreign and corrupt elements can take root and lead to spiritual and moral decline. For the Israelites, this leaven represented a departure from their covenant relationship with God and a move toward a corrupted form of worship and governance, which Jesus sought to correct through his teachings and ministry, the leaven of the Pharisees. The Pharisees were the religious leaders of the time, known for their strict adherence to the law of Moses. However, Jesus often criticized them for their hypocrisy, legalism, and lack of genuine faith. The leaven of the Pharisees refers to their corrupt practices, which included a focus on outward appearances, self-righteousness, and a failure to understand the true spirit of God's commandments. The leaven of Herod Herod, representing the political power of the time, symbolized the worldly influence and the dangers of political corruption. The leaven of Herod can be understood as the secular and immoral influence that sought to undermine true faith and righteousness. Herod's dynasty, rooted in Edomian Edomite descent, was known for its collaboration with Roman authorities and its moral compromises. Jesus' Warning Jesus' warning to his disciples was to be vigilant against the subtle and pervasive influences that could lead them away from the truth. The combination of religious hypocrisy, the Pharisees, and political corruption, Herod, represented significant threats to the purity of their faith and mission. By warning against these influences, Jesus emphasized the importance of maintaining spiritual integrity and resisting the temptations of both religious legalism and worldly power. And he charged them, saying, Take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the leaven of Herod. Mark 8.15 KJV. Let's dive into the concept of leaven, flour, and baking as it's used symbolically in Scripture, and how it relates to the leaven of Herod and the Edomites, which Christ calls out as a sign of Satan's influence in Mark 8.15. Monologue. The symbolism of leaven and the warning of Herod's influence. Leaven, or yeast, plays a crucial role in baking. It's a small, almost invisible substance mixed into flour that causes the dough to rise and expand. In biblical times, leaven was often seen as a symbol of something that spreads silently, affecting the entire mixture, whether for good or bad. 
In a physical sense, it's a vital ingredient in baking bread, but spiritually, it takes on a much deeper meaning. When Jesus warns in Mark 8.15, Take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. He's using leaven as a metaphor for corrupting influences. Just as a small amount of yeast quietly spreads throughout the dough, so too can evil influences, false doctrines, sinful practices, and spiritual decay slowly permeate a community or a nation. In particular, the leaven of Herod and the Edomites represents the subtle, creeping influence of wickedness that had infiltrated the leadership of Judea. The Edomites, the descendants of Esau, were long-standing enemies of Jacob Israel. Through a forced conversion, as Josephus tells us, they were integrated into the nation of Judah during the time of John Hyrcanus. However, this didn't mean they became spiritually pure. Instead, their presence became like leaven, quietly spreading a corrupting influence among the people, blending with the nation, and distorting the true message of God's covenant with Israel. The leaven of Herod represents more than just political intrigue. It symbolizes the blending of worldly power, corruption, and spiritual degradation. Herod himself, an Edomite by ancestry, embodied this mixing of wickedness. His reign, marked by fear, oppression, and deceit, reflected the deep-rooted spiritual corruption that had taken hold in leadership. Now let's think about what Jesus was really warning his disciples about in Mark 8.15. This wasn't just a political warning, it was spiritual. The leaven of Herod, the Edomites, and the Pharisees had become signs of Satan's influence, quietly working through their false teachings, worldly ambitions, and lack of true devotion to God. Satan's subtle hand was at work, much like yeast in flour, turning what should have been a holy, pure nation into something corrupted. This leaven, once small, grew over time. What started as small compromises with the world, such as Herod's lust for power, eventually became a larger movement away from the righteousness God had commanded his people to uphold. This is why Jesus warns his disciples to avoid letting the teachings, practices, and even leadership of such corrupted individuals infiltrate their hearts and minds. The deeper message is clear. Be vigilant. What seems small, just a bit of leaven, can lead to a larger spiritual downfall. The leaven of Herod, symbolized by the Edomite infiltration, had spread far beyond just political corruption. It became a spiritual signpost, pointing to how deeply Satan had embedded his deception within the leadership of Israel. As we reflect on this today, it's a call to guard against letting small, seemingly harmless influences, whether in doctrine or practice, corrupt our faith. Like leaven in dough, these influences can spread, often unnoticed, until the entire spiritual life is affected. Jesus' warning is just as relevant now as it was then. In this way, Jesus was preparing his disciples for the battle against spiritual corruption, warning them of the pervasive influence of the leaven, whether of the Pharisees, of Herod, or of Satan himself. It's a message about purity, vigilance, and staying true to the ways of God. I know thy works, and tribulation, and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews, and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Revelation 2.9 KJV This verse reflects the Messiah's deep awareness of the trials faced by his true followers, recognizing their suffering and spiritual wealth despite outward poverty. He also acknowledges the blasphemy of those who falsely claim to be Jews but are not. This likely refers to a group that has infiltrated the identity of the true Israelites. The reference to them as the synagogue of Satan implies that although they claim to be Judeans, they are not the true descendants of Israel and instead are aligned with deceit and opposition to God. In this context, this passage suggests that the Messiah is fully aware of those who have falsely assumed the identity of the true Israelites, potentially linked to the Edomites, who historically were descendants of Esau and often opposed the Israelites. The Messiah's words serve as a reassurance that he recognizes the true spiritual lineage of his people and is aware of the falsehoods perpetuated by those who claim to be what they are not. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, 
I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Revelation 3, 9, KJV. In this verse, the Messiah addresses those who falsely claim to be Jews, but are actually part of the synagogue of Satan. This term identifies them as imposters, not true descendants of Israel, but rather people aligned with deception and opposition to God's truth. Historically, this can be connected to the Edomites and Canaanites, who were part of the population that John Hyrcanus, a Hasmonean ruler, forced to convert to Judaism. By the time of this forced conversion, the Edomians, descendants of Esau, had likely mixed with the Canaanites, forming a group with both Edomite and Canaanite ancestry. The rise of the Herodian dynasty, which was of Edomian descent, further solidified this group's influence, allowing them to usurp authority over the true descendants of Jacob Israel living in Judea. These false Judeans, through their political and religious influence, became powerful. But the Messiah's message in Revelation 3.9 promises that their deceit will be exposed, and the true followers of God will be vindicated.